Hello everyone and welcome back. It's Chuck Thunder and we're starting off the new year with a top 10 video. So I've done a lot of Let's Plays, but I figured this time around I'd kind of summarize what everything that I've done in the last 50 episodes of my Let's Play series of what you should be doing if you are a new beginner. So this is the uh, title of this episode is going to be the top 10 things to do in Uncharted Waters Online for new players. <clears throat> so new players, you will have to consider doing these things and there's no particular order to any of these things um, some things come before others and I'll kind of outline what those things will be but uh, without further ado let's take a look at the top 10 things to do in Uncharted, Uncharted Waters Online for new players uh, right now so number one that I have written down is go to school go to school okay so you're if you're new to the game someone probably has already told you to go to school so, first thing, you're going to go to school in Sagers and do all three job exams for each job type. Beginners, intermediate, and advanced exams. The order is up to each player, but I recommend Adventure, Trade, and then Maritime. Or Trade, Adventure, then Maritime. Whichever. But just be sure to be in a related job type when you're doing those quests. For example, you should be an animal trader or some form of trade job when doing the trade quests. Because when you're doing the quests, you will earn more XP and more fame when you are in the correct job. So be sure to be in the correct job. So just as an example, I'll show you my character. Right now I'm a medicine trader, and you can tell that this is a trade job because it has these three little barrels. So any kind of quest that I do specifically for trade will be boosted for that. So now back to school. So completing the school exam quests come with great rewards. They come with boosts, discoveries levels and teaching moments so be sure to do everything that you can in the quests um, not only just the exams but also the other quests they will teach you how to play the game um, um, and specifically about maritime and adventure they'll teach you some basics on how to do those kinds of discoveries and jobs be sure to get um, the school clothing which you'll see my character wearing at the moment um, from the vendor in Sagers as well as it will have enough formality and disguise to get you in most cities and allow you to speak with most nobles so disguise level here is 20 and formality is one now that might be slightly boosted because of some other things I'm wearing but for the most part you'll have enough of these two things to talk to most players or most NPCs as well as also get into most cities that you need to get into early game disguise might need to be higher to get into some of the later cities in the game uh, out in the Middle East but for the most part it'll be work for most of your early game stuff other players are also really helpful during this portion of the game so don't be afraid to ask for help in game if you don't know what you're doing and I also have um, uh, videos out that you can watch for each of those exams um, in case you don't know where to find them I'll link them in the description below along with a website that has some of these quests and um, how to do them uh, in written form if that's what you prefer um, so be sure to check out those videos too if you want to see me walk you through them um, there are more than one option to do the exams but I chose my favorites and you can follow those along um, you know for the entire process all right so that was number one number two production skills pick a production skill tree and learn and focus on early game but don't get too many skills outside the focused area and trim out your languages so that because um, you don't need all the languages so very very importantly before I get too far ahead of myself pick a production skill tree so if we go look at our skills you'll see that on each of these tabs there's trees and each of them have some sort of um, connection so sewing has a skill tree casting has a skill tree spice trading has a skill tree handicrafts has a skill tree firearm trading has a skill tree some are somewhat in connect, interconnected adventure same thing unlock recognition observe these are more interconnected than you might think but at least for production skills trade skills production skills are all relatively within their tree and then you can branch out for a couple others so as an example since I'm a medicine trader right now you'll see that I have these ones highlighted and so these ones are uh, sorry did I say yeah, medicine trader so therefore handicrafts is one of the skills that I'm going to need so medicine trader is the handicrafts focus so notice I don't I have all the skills in handicrafts with the exception of jewelry trading but I also have the other skills that are uh, part of it so Back to what I was saying. Pick a production skill tree and learn and focus it on it early game. Don't get too crazy going doing handicrafts and just casting at the same time. Pick one and stick with it. Also, when it comes to your languages, you'll want to forget all the languages but your own language, which you can't forget, and learn 
body language instead, which is over here. So that's going to open up some slots. You can run out of slots pretty early, so hence why I say get rid of those languages. Um, so what also helps you choose what skill tree to go with is choosing the job type. Well, um, so in this case, my job type here was a trade job, that's medicine trader. You can get animal trader, you can get a military trade, like such as junior officer job, and that'll focus your skills. But when it comes to production skills, we want to find a production a trade skill that is going to be one that you want to focus on. I recommend choosing animal trader because you can get started with cooking and the cooking related skills um, are a little bit easier for less confident people out there. So it's pretty, I'm, you know, pretty easy to get a head start on. And plus getting bigger food is really useful early game. And so you don't have to go buying it from um, the tavern on a daily basis, uh, which you'll still be doing even though you're making your own food. But I do suggest doing animal trader and doing cooking related skills. Um, it's easy to do, and if you're in the Mediterranean region, I know a lot about that, but I'm sure it's pretty easy up in the northern region as well. It's not a money maker, so don't look for it in this production tree um, to do cooking to make money, because it's not really what you're going to make with it, but it is a way to learn how production skills work. Um, and you could choose casting, handicrafting, or sewing, but I don't recommend doing shipbuilding. That's not really a trade skill that's in the battle, if you'll check here. Shipbuilding is not something I recommend doing. Um, immediately because this is going to have some connection to some trade skills but it's not as straightforward as just going oh I can start building ships there's all process which I explained in a later earlier video so I'll attach a link in the description as well as well for some guides to some basic production skills so I'll do sewing cooking and candy crafts or something just because it's pretty simple number three get aids now I don't mean aids aids I mean get assistance get aides that assist you playing the game. They are the guys that follow you around. They are the people that you see you know, other ships sailing behind other ships. So really important, let's get our aides. So you've already gone to school, you're getting your production skills done. As soon as you hit level 20 in any job type, you can get an aid from a barkeep as soon as possible. The more time you spend sailing with the aid, the faster they will level and build trust. And you wanna to get to 50 trust because then that's when you can assign them a ship and get access to more cargo space. So as you can see with my aid, I have an aide here, it says aid information, aid captain, his name is Victor, and he is trust level 62, which means he has a ship, and therefore I can assign him one of my extra ships so that he gives me extra cargo. So that's one of the first and foremost important things. Now, you might say to yourself, who do I choose? Well, once you choose one, or before you choose one, you want to choose one that complements your production skills or supplements any weaknesses that your character may have. So I started this tune off as a casting tune, so hence why I chose Victor, because he gave plus one to casting. Um, he also had casting assistance, and a few might have other things here that might help. So I chose him for that particular reason. Then I chose um, Halfina, which I'm not quite there yet, but she's going to help me with the medicine training part, because hence there is the medicine training situation and I could transfer over to storekeeper and I can immediately get medicine trading boost right now if I really wanted to. So choose aids in which that boost you or complement you or assist you. Uh, in my example here I chose these guys but in my other tunes I chose Claudia as I first aid because she complemented my skills for cooking with livestock seasonings and foodstuffs and other boosts. So if you're more focused on things like maritime like land or battle focused, you may want to choose military um, aids uh, that help you recover in battle or give you better skills with like ballistics or first aid or such things of that nature. And the same thing goes for adventure. There are adventure aids out there. So be sure to read the list, which I'll attach in the link in the description here. I'll read the list of the um, potential aids you can get that will assist you directly with your skills. Um, if you are, you can, if you're hesitant about going with one, be sure to read up on them first, ask in game to see what people might suggest might be better. But, and don't, you don't want to choose the wrong one. You, you can dismiss an aid after you choose one, but you're going to lose any progress that you started building with the aid. So choose the right aid to start with and then start sailing around, doing jobs, doing quests, leveling up because you're going to wish that you did early as possible. So as soon as you hit level 20 while you're doing your school, go get the aid from there major city or any major city or any bar where you'll find one and um, get what you need just be sure to look at the list that I attach below in the description so number four go to college now you've already gone to school you might be saying why am I going to college well, 
because college is the next step. Now, you can go to college while you're also at school. You don't have to wait. There's no particular order. I do recommend doing all of these things kind of concurrently as you're playing the game, being sure that you get to these things as soon as you can. So if London is open for you, meaning you've unlocked it with the port permits or you're from, say, London, go to, Ox go to London immediately and get in the carriage and go to Oxford to speak with a professor to enroll in college. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. It's free college. You select courses that you want to complete and then you do the tasks that the course requires some of them are just sailing around some are buying and selling goods of certain types some of them are repairing your ship and so on and so forth once you complete enough of that task you finish your quote-unquote thesis and then um, you return back to the professor or to any scholar at any archive in any city and when you hand it in you get um, the completion status you get some credits and you get a completion status you also earn a skill slot or I shouldn't skill say skill slot you earn a skill that you could use in a slot so let me show you what that looks like so you've gone and go to college so in your skills tab you'll see college I have two skill slots available and these are all the different things that I've earned by doing different um, scholarship um, scholarship different uh, courses scholarship recognition gives me more um, credits as I complete quests in college or uh, complete courses and then this one gives me discounts on these particular um, goods alcohol luxury and such so I did like a particular course that gave me a boost with this so now they're a little bit cheaper to purchase these things um, so that's what they do you can go to skill settings and you can transfer it over but as you can see here it costs um, certain amounts of credits to add um, them over so be uh, careful that you don't spend all your credits, otherwise you're going to have to repeat um, your credits in order, or rec repeat the courses to get more credits. So at least you could always do that, but just be mindful that you only have two skill slots and use them wisely. Choose to change them back and forth as you need it. Um, so that's important. Go into college immediately. Go up to Oxford, start doing the things, and get started as soon as you can. Because um, again, you're going to be doing a lot of these things kind of just like in the background passively as you do the rest of the game. Um, so, uh, let's move on. Oh, well, before I move on from college, there are, uh, other tiers of school. Um, the first tier being the easiest, and then you get to second tiers and such. So just don't stop. Just keep doing college. You're never going to really stop. Um, always make sure that you're doing research for college at any point in the game. Um, you can watch my videos that I've done on how to do college, um, as well, because they're, they're going to be helpful in case you don't know what I'm talking about. Number five, discover all of the towns. Now, all of the towns that you're available to, because not everybody's available to all the towns at all times, so you can't just go sailing across the Caribbean the moment you get a ship. First off, you won't make it, and two, you won't be able to dock in any of the towns. So you need to make sure you have the port permits. So, I say discover all the towns, but the most important thing is to get all your port permits. Get all your port permits by doing all of the things that you have to do with fame, all the things that you have to do with quests. I have a whole um, video series. Again, it's all part of the same Let's Play series, but I have a whole section of videos about doing different um, quests in order to unlock all of your port permits. So I will attach, well, I can attach those links to those videos as well into the description, but it's usually better off explained on the website. So I'll attach that in the website below. But discover all of the towns. Do so in an adventure job if you can, because you're going to get bonus XP and more fame for discovering the towns while you're in an adventure job. So do that to the best of your ability. And when you hand in the, the discovery cards, make sure to hand them in to a person that accepts port permits um, and gives you the best rewards. There are a few of them out there. Um, in Seville, the name of the guy is, and I'll look at the map, is Duke Farness, I believe. Yeah, Duke Farness. He's the guy that you're going to hand them into. Um, I don't believe it's Tom Pierce or El Greco. So you're going to go to Duke Farness, and that's where you're going to hand in your port permits. He'll give you the most uh, fame and adventure experience, I believe. It may not be adventure experience. And he'll give you a QMP, a quest mediation permit, as a reward. If you don't hand them into the correct person, you won't get a QMP. QMPs are worth somewhere between 75 no, 100,000 to 250,000, maybe even 500,000 uh, ducats if you can get the right person to buy them. So be sure to um, uh, hang on to them for the sales that you might want to make with them or save them for yourself because what they do is they reset quest lines. Uh, all the quests, like if you go to a merchant or you go to the exam um, 
quest guys and you can hit refresh with a QMP and you can get a new set of quests every single time. So they're important for people who are hunting for certain quests. So be sure to do that when you to have your hand in your town discoveries. Um, so get the poor permits, discover all the towns, hand all the towns in. That's number five. Number six, buy the farm. Now I don't mean die, I mean go get a farm. Now farms, oops, I am clicking around. Farms are in game on islands. So it's really important to know where they are and you'll see them marked on the map with this little private farm little symbol here. And there are several all over the place. Uh, I'm not sure where they all are off the top of my head, but each one has a benefit of its own. You just need to make sure that you are aware of where they're located because they don't show up unless you discover them like I did here with mine uh, here. So this is the one that I chose. It's on the west coast of Africa. It's one of the easiest to get early games. So as long as you can unlock this port uh, permit, you can get to this private farm. So as soon as you can safely reach one for the farms, do so. You'll be able to build plots of land that produce daily goods that you could use for production and selling. You probably have seen me do it in my videos before where you can do that from the bank. Each island has benefits for specific skills, but the easiest island to get to is the one in the middle of the sea off the west coast of Africa, which I have right here. You can get there relatively early game and will at least provide some extra bonus materials. So once you start building on it, then you can start getting some extra bonus stuff, start using it for crafting or other things. You won't have to sail to the little island every single time that you want to do work on the island. Luckily, you can do this from your bank in your major city. For sure, I think it has to be the major city that you belong to. Um, once you uh, build and collect this produce every day, that's going to be part of your daily routine. Uh, every time you get into the game, you're going to check in on your farm, you're going to collect all the items, and you're going to develop the facilities that you want to get items from. So, like, if you're somebody who's focused on casting like I was, you built all the mines so you can get all of the iron ore and graphite that you possibly could. Um, so, that's one of the things you're going to make sure you do as soon as you can get to one of the farms. Now, if you don't want to do get this particular farm and you want to wait, you're going to have to unlock the port permits to get to the other farms. I'm pretty sure there's a farm in the middle of the Indian Ocean. So, something to consider if you're somebody who wants to get another farm other than this one here. This one I believe is called Ascension, but I could be wrong. <clears throat> Number seven, buy quarters. That's another one that you need to do. Kind of like uh, what we're talking about with um, the bank. The bank is going to be the place that you can do most of this. Um, oh, there's the bank. Is where you can do most of this work. Here, the bank is where you're going to work on the farm. It's also where you're going to buy quarters and you're going to upgrade your quarters. As soon as you have the ducats, buy the quarters at the bank in your main city. It will act as extra storage, and in this game, storage is a premium. So be sure to get to the quarters, be sure to buy it, and then as you can see here, this is the kind of stuff that you can store. You can store equipment, documents, aids, mannequins, ship parts, stored consumables, uh, skill books, and displayed ornaments so be sure that you do that and you can check your quarter storage right here so it's important that you do this because this is just even if it's not much it's a little bit of storage that you don't have to hold on to things in your own person because you're going to run out of space so as soon as you're in the ranks and the fame you can start to unlock um, redesign plans and you can design more and more of these um, expansions here so here I am with the basic one and I can move on to the next one and as you can see it swaps out a stored ship part for an extra stored equipment and an extra stored consumable and there's different varieties of these that can do this for you so as you see here, here this one reduces all the stored goods to zero so you can choose which one but you got to be the correct court rank in order to do that so that's what fame is for to help you boast through those uh, court ranks and that'll get you more quarters so, for storage purposes, number seven, buy quarters. Super important. Number eight, buy and sell rare trade goods. Now, if you're not somebody who knows what those are, go to your market keeper and you could find out. There are weekly trade goods that become quote unquote rare and market keepers will pay top dollar for them. So, here's a market keeper, market apprentice, same thing. Um, talk to him in any town and click rare trade goods for the information. Here he'll give you a picture of it and he'll give a little bit of a blurb describing what it is, but he won't directly tell you what it is, unfortunately. And if you don't know what it is, you could look it up on one of the different UWO websites or just simply ask World Trek, hey, what is the uh, Seville uh, guy looking for? It's like some form of grain or something he's looking for. Yeah, a grain native to Andes valued as a crop, easily grown in infertile soil. So just ask, find out what it is, um, and then you can go find it and bring it back. Now, 
you can make good money if the rare trade good is a good rare trade good. And I don't mean like, oh, it's a high value one. They're all pretty high value. It's finding ones that are close by. So, <clears throat> um, if anyone could tell you what it is, um, sometimes you can get ones that are really close to the city in which that you found out what the rare trade good is here. So, if this was, say, red beans, red beans are found really, really easily. They're in, they're in Sueta, Sueta, or I don't know how to pronounce it, Coita, Seta, Sueta. Sueta is across the river, or literally across the Mediterranean. Sueta is right here. You can get red beans right here. And if you get the red beans and you bring them to Seville, you could usually sell them for a big profit if they are a rare, rare trade good. So, it's a good idea to. Um, Keep an eye out on your um, rare trade goods because your rare trade goods can be very, very profitable. You'll also get boosted experience. Again, also same thing. Be sure to be in a trade job when you're buying and selling rare trade goods because you're going to get massive amounts of experience for doing it. Um, and you can also kind of, if Seville wasn't the highest paid area, it might say like medium versus high. And you can go to Faro and Faro might say high and you can get more from Faro than you would in Seville. So, but as of right now, that is a really good thing to participate in to make massive amounts of money if you're not somebody who wants to cheese your way through the game. Um, and if you're curious of what I mean by cheesing through the game is getting a donation of money from somebody and then going and buying these East Asian goods here that are say like Brush 69, Soury 75, and Spices 30,000 and then buying them and then from at a boosted price here and then selling them for a well undercut price here and just to boost your experience. It's a good way to do it. That's why these people sit here, because um, they know the people are going to get tired of waiting. But that's the thing you can do too. But you're not going to make money. You're going to lose money doing that. Maybe a good idea would be to sell rare trade goods, get all the money, make all that money, then use that money to buy East Asian goods and sell them to get even more experience. Sure. Number nine, participate in all events that the games that boost you, uh, in the game that boost you. So in this case, there are many parts of the game that. Um, give you uh, bonus rewards, boosts, and or um, good ways to earn experience, skill, and or give you items that you might need. So uh, one of the events being races. So I just read earlier when I came into the game, if you look very closely at the loading screen when you're first uh, logging in, you'll see like an, uh, an announcements page. They'll usually tell you the date range of when the race is happening, as well as also where it's coming and going to. So right now, I think it's a race from Amsterdam to Benin. So if you're curious and you want to participate in this week's one, um, Amsterdam is here. And Benin, I believe, sheesh, where is Benin? I'm not even sure where Benin is. But uh, this tune, I wouldn't do the race because I can't properly participate if I don't know where it is. It's not here, it's not here, it's not here, it's not here. Not there. Nope, I don't know where Benin is. So. Be careful. Don't go sailing places you don't know where they are. So, I'm not going to participate with this tune, maybe another tune, but go to Amsterdam, talk to the port official, say you want to participate in the race, and the moment you say that, get in your boat, start sailing, and it's a race. Now, you're not going to win. Unless if you have the fastest ship in the game. The whole goal is not to win, the whole goal is to complete it. If you complete it, it might take you a day, it might take you some time to finish it. When you finish, you'll get a reward when you talk to the port official, so that reward can be pretty good sometimes. Um, it gets better the faster you complete it, but you still get a reward regardless. So that's one event you can participate in. Another example would be Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is one that I don't know much about, but I know that a lot of guys look forward to it because you get extra experience when doing things out in the United States area, um, in North America. So more people can tell you more about that than I do. Oh, look at that. Someone just posted with their goods right there. Eritrea goods, earthworms, quinoa, apple vinegar, goatfish, mate, tea, cloves, Seto Mio, Upland Rice, that's not bad, Fragrant Wood. So Upland Rice, I believe, is pretty much across over in, if I'm not mistaken, Upland Rice can be found in Casablanca. I could be wrong. And if you're somebody who likes to make apple vinegar, um, you can make apple vinegar up in the northern region of, um, I think the name of the region would be Antwerp? Calais? Calais. I think it's clay, you can get apples, and if you're somebody who can handicraft it, you can make it yourself. All right, so be sure to participate in all the events. Also, if there's a special event in game um, that people are talking about, it's also a good idea to check the well-dressed gentleman in um, the tavern. 
because during certain parts of the year, the well-dressed gentleman actually rewards you sometimes every day. I don't always know when this is the case, but usually there's an event. Be sure to check the announcements for what this might be. I'll show you where the Seville's well-dressed well gentleman is. Every bar in a major city should have one. Um, so here in Seville, he's in the bar, and there he is, well-dressed gentleman. And usually when you talk to him during special events, you'll get something, but nothing going on. So, certain things trigger him. I don't know what it is, but hey, it doesn't work hurt to check when you're filling up at the bar. Um, so, yeah, you obviously need port permits to participate in the races. That's the number one thing. Uh, um, and then uh, we'll just be careful of where you end up sailing to. And um, it takes a little bit of investment to do so. But if you, the most important thing you need to come away with participating in events, the most important one is the bi weekly, I believe it's bi weekly, every two weeks, a XP and proficiency boost. The week of maintenance usually means that at the end of that week there will be a XP boost for 100%, so which is basically double the XP. So be sure to um, participate in that as well to cut back on your amount of grind time that you have to do. It's probably the most valuable time to participate. There are other times too where you get like more than 100%, sometimes 200, sometimes 300%. Be on the lookout for those events and the announcements as well because you will boost yourself significantly if you participate during those times. And last but not least, challenge missions. Now, as you play the game, you will complete milestones. And milestones can be checked off in the uh, challenge mission section of your tab here. So if you go to record, go to challenge mission, and you'll see a bunch of different missions that as you complete them, you can get rewards. Now, notice I, never, I have not obtained all my rewards. The reason why storage i do not want to grab all these things and then suddenly go oh crap my storage is full i don't know where to put all these things claim them as you need them you don't even need all of them sometimes you like really I, do i need expert spin, expert fisherman's gear probably not so i'm not going to go and obtain this reward just yet until i know i need it um experience five jobs do i need this griffin figurehead not right now likely mastered repair tools just get one of them maybe if you're into doing repairs of furniture sure Paid for rewards? Sure. If you need them, headache medications? Sure. You know, choose and pick and choose, but look in there because you are going to get all sorts of extra goodies. And if you want to see what some of the things that you can get, like you can get skill books, I'm going to read 40 skills, and then towards the bottom you'll see the blue ones that you already did complete and traded in. Purchase a ship gets you this. Level 5 gets you these starter packs. These are the most important ones. So be sure to open the starter packs as you go because um, you're going to get ships you're going to get boosts for speed while you're sailing and all sorts of things so check your challenge missions uh, and be sure not to open up all because you will run into space and storage will become an optimal thing that you need to constantly be worried about so hopefully i don't believe i missed anything major but this is the newbie list of top 10 things to do in the game this isn't for intermediate players uh, some intermediate players can get some value out of this but it isn't for late game people it's for those new guys who just don't even know where to start so there's no particular order to this list, but if I had to pick an order, I definitely recommend going to school, picking a production, choosing a job, focusing the school, focusing the job, getting your aid as soon as you can, going to college as soon as you can, getting a farm as soon as you can, buying the quarters as soon as you can, and then as soon as you're doing all that, all the other things you just kind of do as you go. You will be participating in events, you will be buying and selling real trade goods, you will be discovering towns. You will be doing college and school all at the same time. So it's kind of all happened concurrently. So I do hope this list um, was helpful to you, um, and especially to all the newbies out there for this great game. I have addressed most of these topics in my Let's Play series, so please be sure to check those out and read the links in the descriptions that I'm going to attach to this video for any more help for each of the topics. People in this game are always willing to guide you, so don't be afraid to ask, especially if you find me in game. Add me on the game as Chuck Thunder or Charles Thunder, and I'll be glad to help you. And you can always post any questions or comments in the description in the, into these videos and ask, and I'm always going to respond. I don't think I really miss any, um, except for when they're not really questions or they're complaints, just so you know. But anyways, I do the best that I can to interact with everybody. I do appreciate everybody's support. You can always support by liking and subscribing to the channel. Um, I even have a Patreon, not that anyone really cares. Look me up, Chuck Thunder. I'm out there. I'm not going to bother posting a link because I'm not money grabbing here, but... I just have it up just because, hey, off the off chance that somebody feels generous enough to do that, I would appreciate it. But otherwise, like and subscribe to the channel if you like what I do. 
Uh, I don't do this often anymore because the game is getting a little grindy, but I want to make sure that other people find out that there is a way past the grind if you follow these 10 easy things to do in the game if you're a new player. So uh, I do appreciate it all. Everybody, this is Chuck Thunder, signing out.